This program is brought to you by the partners of A Root Awakening International. Help others find truth. Support A Root Awakening International today. School is not what you think it is, and neither is homeschooling. In this episode, Craig and Ann Elliott explain how to make the most of your children's education in far less time per day than you might think, and why having a conversation with your kids is the best way to teach. Because it's the end of the sixth day, the sun is set, and this is Shabbat Night Live. Shabbat Shalom Torah fans, welcome to Shabbat Night Live with Michael Rood. What if I told you that your kids could finish school in half the time every day and score better than their peers on a test? <laughs> Craig and Ann Elliott share how to do it tonight and they know what they're doing because they see it from both the public school side and the homeschooling side, they've got both in their family. Very eye-opening stuff tonight. And now, if you would, set your eyes on the astronomically and agriculturally corrected biblical Hebrew calendar. It is the fourth and final Shabbat of the third month. There you have it there. Now, let's say hello to my co-hosts, David Robinson, Keith Johnson. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome. Good to be Welcome. here. Welcome. Good to be here. You know, uh, before the cameras came on, David, you said something about your son saying something oh, to Oh, we you. were talking about teaching our kids, yeah. and, and my son said, Dad, I learn more by watching what you do instead of what you say or have said. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we can preach the Bible with our mouth, and we can yep. do that all day long, but what are our actions teaching our kids? Right. And now we've been, we've got all this... Uh, cultural infiltration with technology, all these mm. different systems, if you will, that are basically raising our kids. Mm -hmm. And because we all are, you know, selfish in some way or another, but the things that are going on in our culture today are teaching us to be even more selfish. Yeah. Yep. And well, so, it's funny how you say that. So how you brought it to, you know, we talk about sharing God's word as being a witness. Mm -hmm. We're standing on a street corner and just blah, right. blah, 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 but just... Be, be the Christian. Let yeah. me see your actions like your son said to Show you. me how to live. Right, show me how Don't to live. Don't tell me how to live, show me how to live. Amen. Perfect, yeah, that's very good. And uh, Keith, you had something well, no, to bring up too I mean, too the first that. homeschool was in, uh, back in ancient Israel. First homeschool, yeah. yeah, ancient Israel. Father said, listen, as you walk along the road, mm -hmm. teach your child, Deuteronomy 6, teach your son, teach your grandson. And again, we were talking about Passover, and you know, this year I said to myself, you know, if you think about it, you're sitting there at the table, in our Passover, and we have kids. We invite kids all the time to our Passover table, our little nieces and nephews. And this time we had a couple extra little guests, little mm -hmm. kids that came to our Passover table. And I was just inspired because I thought, wait, why don't we tell the story so that at the end of the story, they can tell us what they learned. And every adult's job was to take a piece of the story and mm -hmm. to explain it at the level of a child. And mm -hmm. it was the best Passover we ever, ever had. Because in the end, we asked those kids who were not Christian kids. right? Tell us what you learned. And those little kids started preaching to us. Well, Moses, yeah. he had a bad situation. <laughs> <laughs> God told Moses. <laughs> and I got inspired. I thought to myself, we got it everywhere around the world. We should just take what it says. Teach the children. Let the yes. children understand. Oh, we should go down on video. That would been so yeah. hilarious. Been but great. I got in. By the way, you know, one of the things about kids is they say, show me, you know, show me in the book. And last week I talked about Ezekiel. And I got to at least give yeah. the verse because people are like, where did he come up with that? Yeah. And you said we should read it. Okay. Ezekiel 47 about you coming over real estate, getting a chance to check where it is. You're going to read it. says, and it will come about that you shall divide it by for your inheritance, verse 22. And among the aliens and stay, who stay in your midst to bring forth sons in your midst, they shall be to you as the native born from the sons of Israel. They shall be allotted an inheritance with you among the tribes. And it will come about that in the tribe with which the alien stays, there you shall give him the inheritance declares Yehovah our wow. God. I mean, That's Ezekiel like, look, 47, 22, 23, right yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. So listen, yep. I'm bringing you over there this fall. Anyone wants to come with us? We got a few more weeks. Maybe people, if yep. they want to, they can hear about it. Um, BFA International, fall prayer tour, north, south, east, and west in Israel. Uh, we extended it a little longer because of our opens. Right. Mm -hmm. But basically, 
we're, you're going to be over there, and you're going to get a chance to pick where it is that you want. Okay, want cool. To stay. <laughs> now, speaking of speaking of Israel, so yeah. uh, we have something to uh, show folks afterwards, at, right after this, Absolutely. before the, the teaching tonight. Absolutely. And uh, where are we going to this week? So, for that, think this actually this week. Oh, this week we're actually going to the Garden Tomb. Okay. <laughs> the actual Garden Tomb, and, um, and also we're going to be on the streets, the old city streets of, of Helena at the time, three twenty six. AD, where they said, this is our foundation for Western Christianity. The Bible is much deeper than 326 when mm. Constantine sent his mama and said, go pick these spots. Right. First person who taught me that, Michael. Aha. <laughs> so you get a chance to see that right after our little time here and then go over to the free app where people get a chance to experience uh, the teaching from the garden. That's right, it is, because it is a, a subscription app, but people yeah, can get, get free, two weeks free. Two weeks free. So there we go. Now, speaking of deals, so uh, David, you and I have been working on stuff and people have seen it last couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, we can't really go into great detail about it, but <laughs> <laughs> our but, June, yeah, we have, starts in June. We have, uh, we have basically deals all through the whole summer. Yes. Basically we're doing from June 1st to 10th, uh, and then, so that one's already done, but so, and then this one from the 11th to the 20th, or every 10 days, there's gonna be a new deal. And so there's the deal on the bottom of the screen right there. You can go take advantage of that right now. We're doing this all summer. All yeah. summer long. We, we used to Through do it, like August. last year, I think we did it for just July or we something. Did ju we did July, but we are, Going to do it all summer. We're going to go from June to August, Woo. all the way through August. Yeah. All right. Let's have summer. Let's just have yeah. a summer spectacular. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> some fun in summer, right? I mean, come Absolutely. on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm Absolutely. Hoping that, I'm hoping, Scott, that if we get enough people that say they like these little pieces, yeah. that uh, we can do a whole series and that kids can learn even more all summer uh, regarding... You know, that would be cool. I, mean, I got I got enough I got enough that last for the entire summer. Every week. Wow. No, I'm telling you, there's that much stuff. It's wow. Uh, that's terrific. Now, speaking of good stuff, so... People who are doing our uh, teaching tonight also did our love gift. Mm -hmm. And they, tonight, so they're talking about homeschooling, but this is another part of the family they talked about, foundations for a healthy marriage. Mm -hmm. So it basically says here that uh, whether you've been married for 30 years, 30 days, you know that marriage takes a lot of work. We all know that. We've been married for yeah. a long time, each of us here. And that means uh, having a firm foundation based on the Torah. And this teaching explores how lifelong love begins with teaching preschoolers about godly relationships. So instead Absolutely. of teaching all this nonsense about you can mm. be whatever gender you want, and oh, just if you oh. don't like what you like, don't you can go get to the, me started. You can go to the doctor and change it if you want. <laughs> How about we teach kids who they are in Yehovah? Amen How about we that do that? Amen. Yeah. So that that's what this teaching uh, doesn't touch on that, but it goes you know it goes in that direction. Yeah. And David, that's for uh, a gift of fifty dollars or yep, more. Yeah, get right? the teaching, and for a gift of a hundred dollars, we're going to give you this nice um, uh, Ten Commandment plaque made out of olive wood, which the olive wood came from Israel, was made in Israel and, and sent here. And it's in English and you can flip that over and you got the Hebrew. Hmm, yeah. very cool. Got this nice little stand. That's a gift of $100. Uh, and then for 300 or more, we have the teaching, we have the Ten Commandments, and we also have this very heavy duty pewter. That is the nicest it is the nice we've ever done, ever, I think. Ever, and uh, it's very heavy duty, non-tarnish, whatever that means in I guess it just <laughs> it just looks nice. <laughs> yeah, it's like stainless steel. Does that mean it? It just means it stains less. I don't know. It's, it's pewter. It's beautiful. I, I like it. Anyway, yeah. so so yes, yeah, a beautiful cup for a gift of three hundred. And more. there's only a couple of weeks left of that, so people need to move on. Yeah, if you're move do, so. quick, but very nice. Yeah. So just another thank you from Michael. So mm, yes. All right, and thank you to you guys. All right, Craig and Ann Elliott explain how to make the most of your children's education and far less time per day than you might think, and why having a conversation with your kids is the best way to teach them. Michael is next to teach you how to do the kiddush. Stay tuned. <laughs> Well, we've been in the old city of Jerusalem. We've been doing what the psalm says to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We've gone to the outside yesterday. Now we're on the inside, and I can't help to stop at this particular spot. These stones right here are actually the stones that would have been here at the time of Helena, who was the mother of Constantine. Just to my left is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, where there are people. I've never seen so many people waiting in line to actually go into the tomb that she declared as the tomb of the resurrection. Of course, there's also people there that were kissing the rock, they believed that his body was laid there. All that's based on tradition. But what we do at Biblical Foundation Academy International is to inspire people to build a biblical foundation for their faith. And I want to tell you something. It's deeper than 325 where the Western Christianity has actually made their foundation. We go so deep, we go to the Bible. We've got a number of tours that we do. Check out bfainternational.com. Come with us so that you can be inspired to build a biblical foundation for your faith. 
Whether you've been married for 30 years or 30 days, you know that marriage takes a lot of work. And that means having a firm foundation based on the Torah. When we're dealing with a lot of broken homes, a lot of broken marriages in our day and age, this is something that far too often is taken for granted. The family is the mother and the father that are one. And if they're not one, that child is in a broken home. Foundations for a healthy marriage. With homeschool curriculum authors, Craig and Ann Elliott explores how lifelong love begins with teaching preschoolers about godly relationships and how bringing adults back to the basics of the Torah can help repair a marriage that has gone the way of the world. This teaching is our gift to thank you for supporting A Rude Awakening International. When you donate $50 to this ministry in June, we'll send you Foundations for a Healthy Marriage with Craig and Ann Elliott on DVD or Blu-ray. Donate $100 and we'll send you Foundations for a Healthy Marriage plus the Ten Commandments etched on olive wood from Israel, English on one side and Hebrew on the other. Donate $300 and we'll send you the teaching, the Ten Commandments on olive wood, plus a solid pewter kiddush cup featuring a scene of Jerusalem and the blessing over the wine in Hebrew. Bore pri hagafen. These gifts are a limited time offer from Michael Rood to thank you for your support. Make your donation today and receive the $50 gift, the $100 gift, or the $300 gift. Get these exclusive thank you gifts when you make a donation to support A Root Awakening International in June. Call 888-766-3610 or get your gifts online with a donation at monthlylovegift.com. The Apostle Paul said that Yeshua nailed the dogmas, the doctrines and commandments of men, of the arche and exousia, that he overcame, that he nailed their commandments, their man-made dogmas to the cross. And because of that, we are not to allow any of the arche and exousia, any of the religious authorities of men who made up their own commandments to judge us because every one of the feasts of the Lord are prophetic shadow pictures of good things to come. So don't let any pagan, let no religious authority judge you concerning the Sabbath, the new moons. And on the Sabbath, we do not allow the world to judge us and tell us what to do. We know that Yeshua paid the price for us. And the last night he was with his disciples when he took the bread and he blessed the Most High with this blessing. Baruch atah Yehovah, Heleno melech haolam, hamotzi lechem hinaretz. He said, this represents my body, which is now broken for you. As often as you do this, you do it in remembrance of him. And then Yeshua took the cup and he said, this represents the renewed covenant in my blood. This is what this represents. This is what it's always represented. Do this in remembrance of me. And he said that prayer, Baruch Atah Yehovah Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Pari Hagafen. Blessed are you, Yahweh, our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. And he said, do this in remembrance of me and don't let anyone disparage you. Do this until I come again because 
I have made you priests and kings. Shabbat Shalom. Every parent, when they hold their newborn baby, somebody comes up to them and says, you know, you might be holding the next president or something to that effect. And, you know, you think, well, okay, so how are we going to teach this little child? What's the world going to look like when this baby becomes president? We have to raise our kids properly. So what's proper? Well, we all know there's one book that leads to a proper upbringing, and that's the Bible. <laughs> However, no homeschool curriculum, certainly not regular school curriculum, and not even homeschool curriculum really connects the Bible with the Torah or being a Torah observant believer. That is until now. So please welcome back to the Shabbat Night Live stage, Craig and Ann Elliott. Welcome. Thank you, it's good to be back. <laughs> you know, we, we've been talking about all kinds of things and how you guys got here and, and your heart behind things. And I think if folks missed last week, they really need to watch last week and find out why you're doing this. Uh, and part of that story involves uh, two things. A book that's in front of you, Anne, mm -hmm. and a story about a bus. So you guys tell mm -hmm. me which one of these comes first. <laughs> well, I think this started. The book? The I book think this started, is, oh, yes. This was first. So you were Baptist pastors mm -hmm. and left that because you realized that, hey, there's more to our faith than just mm -hmm. the New Testament. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you started homeschooling and realizing there's something missing in even homeschool mm -hmm. programs, right? Yes. Absolutely. So you started writing your own. Is that where this came from? Yes, sir. And I think in Acts 15, it talks about the perfect discipleship method. You know, if you have a new believer coming in, what are the things that you should teach them? And they said, Moses should be read every Sabbath day. And, and we said, you know, we've not really talked about Moses with our children. And the first Messianic congregation that we went to introduced us to Torah portions and, and how the, the ancient scribes had divided up the Torah into, mm -hmm. you know, these, these spots that... And we wanted our children to be able to study it all week long and then go on Sabbath and fellowship with other believers and all have the same thing they're talking about. Yeah. You know, how cool is that? Yeah. That's not it may something. be a rabbinic <laughs> tradition, but it's a, it's a cool idea. It is very cool. It really I wouldn't disparage that. No. I mean, and it would definitely get you to understand, go back through and continuously remember these things each and every yeah. year. And knowing that the apostles did that in the first century, <clears throat> that's really... Wow, that's amazing. So, so we 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 started to write down the questions that we talked about with our children around the table every day. So our oldest son was 18, I think, at the time, and our youngest was about three. And one of the challenges that we had when you're homeschooling is you have to have a way to teach all of the children at their level. Even you have a whole room full, and it's wonderful to talk about the Torah, but we need to educate them. And and so my husband and I, we were talking about my mother who was raised in a one-room schoolhouse in Michigan, and she had some really cool things. So, you know, being a high school teacher, you know, I have mm -hmm. 120 students, uh, six, six, seven periods a day, kind of thing like that, and you're 20 to 30 kids in a classroom, and you're, but you're sitting there and you're teaching one subject, right? And you're, you're going through and, and teaching that all this time. But when you come to homeschooling, so we had seven children, mm -hmm. and when each of those children is, is there and they're in their grade level and they're teaching, you're teaching seven classes to them, that's 28 different lesson plans, so to speak, that you're teaching. Yeah, so how do you do that? Yeah, I mean, and, I mean how does a parent do that? When it's easy, it's not too bad when a lot of parent, families have one, two, maybe three, but when you get to that third and you start going to four, if you want to have a family, a larger family like that, mm -hmm. it becomes extremely difficult to be able to do that. So one time I was teaching math to my children and I never had more than six in school at a time because one graduated when the next one came up. Six is a lot. Yeah. And you're trying to teach algebra, you know, down to kindergarten math. And I, I just, I had I had a teacher book and a quiz book and an answer key and 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 charts and uh, for every single child. And I was, I was like, <laughs> so you're juggling books all day long. And my dream was, yeah, to be able to sit down and is it really possible to teach all your children at the same time? That was that was our question. <clears throat> so when we were, you know, doing homeschooling and stuff like that, and when we she started to begin to write some curriculum and things like this, we had a lot of these friends who were also starting homeschooling because it was kind of starting to become a thing a little bit mm -hmm. with a lot of different Christian families and stuff. And 
in the process, they would start it and they would go on for you know six months, maybe a year. But then they they just they were like, it takes up all our time. And my kids were going we're in school eight nine hours a day, and then they're having homework and they're not getting done till seven eight nine ten o'clock at night and things like this. When we're just doing school, we're not even getting to anything else. Laundry and and they would be like, <laughs> I'm laundry, done with doing this. the dishes, yeah. anything. Right? I got to stick yeah. them back in the public school or wherever mm-hmm. like that. It's and, overwhelming. And it was just overwhelming. And we saw all of our friends leaving, and we're like, you know. Thank, praise God, we uh, were very adamant that we were going to stay in this and that this was the right thing, and especially with me being in the public school system, like, no, we're not going to put our kids back <laughs> in that, no matter what we do. And so, we did, uh, Yehovah just really worked to direct us, and especially Anne, remembering her mom, would, mm-hmm. would grew up in this one-room schoolhouse, mm-hmm. and... and um, and in the process of doing that, we, we would go and talk to her. And, and like, what was it like growing up in that? How is it that a single teacher could go and teach a class of 30 students, but they were from ages, you know, kindergarten all the way up through high, senior Eighth high grade. school, you know, kind of a thing. And how do you do that so that the ones in the top are actually learning and developing while you're starting to train the little ones with the beginning skills that they need to have a foundation? And so that brought us to one of the things that I think stands, makes our curriculum stand alone is what we call Together School. And with, what, with Together School, what it is is that you are um, taking all your kids and putting them together. And instead of trying to teach a, one subject for each grade level, you're bringing them together and communicating as a parent to them and training all of them at once. Mm-hmm. So typically what we say that when we do this is that you are training and teaching to what we call the middle years, which is your like fourth through sixth grade. Mm-hmm. And maybe the one the parents are like, well, wait a minute, I don't want my 18 year old to be bored while you're teaching the fourth to sixth grade, but it's not like that. Because when you're in a, and you're, when you're in there talking to uh, your family, it's like you're carrying on a conversation and you're not sitting there going like, this is dumbing things down. You're just mm-hmm. talking, you're just answering questions, and discussion questions, mm-hmm. and maybe they're written to where a fourth grader can, can understand the question enough to be able to do answers. But that doesn't mean that's where it's gonna stay at. The 18 year old's gonna bring in their knowledge and what they've learned. And the kindergartner can then listen to all these things. And if they have something, maybe God puts them something in their life that they can share or something, or, or the parent can then talk to the little one and say, well, how does this relate to Johnny, to you and the circumstance you had mm-hmm. with your friend the other day? <clears throat> and so even though you're teaching to the starting with the questions mostly in this area, it, it, you're teaching the whole gambit of every age together. So you invite the older ones to sort of contribute as maybe like apprentice teachers Absolutely. and yes. things like that. Absolutely. So now, that, that makes sense. I mean, people mm-hmm. might think, oh, that sounds so impossible, but not really. I mean, every book, what do they tell you when you're, I mean, you've written books, I've written mm-hmm. a couple of books. Mm-hmm. You write to a fifth grade level. Mm-hmm. That's what you're supposed to yeah. do so that everybody can understand, mm-hmm. right? So there's that. And then I guess when you're teaching to everybody, like if, if you have apprentices there, that makes sense. And then also what you guys told me before the cameras came on, explain this concept of how a 12 year education in school is not really 12 years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, it's more like they only have you know three or four years of information, but we have to put our kids into a system for 12 years. So we're gonna have to divide that out. You know, Now that I know how curriculum writing works, it, it's basically you, this classroom is required to have 180 days of school. And so we're going to divide up this math curriculum into 13 years, really, if you count kindergarten, of, of things that we need to teach them, but we need to, get, we need to keep these kids busy mm-hmm. for all those days. And so they divide it out and put it in a little chart. And, and, and when we say our children are behind, it's because they're not on, the, they're not on that chart. You know, that, that man-made, totally ridiculous, we gotta keep our kids busy for 13 years chart. So, it, there's not that much. So really, I think it was Dave who said it too, is that you only, is, is it three sets of four or set, four sets of three grades? How does it work? I think it's three, uh, sets, of th- three sets of four. Mm-hmm. About four years, and, mm-hmm. and you 
basically all curriculum education wise is, is a four year system mm -hmm. and they just repeat it three times through your 12 mm -hmm. grades of school. Mm -hmm. So you so, do it once when you're little, once when the middle years, years and, and once in high really? school. Really? And so mm -hmm. like for instance with math, so what you would do in math is the beginning you're teaching like say, arithmetic, you know, basic addition, subtraction kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But then when you come around the second time you begin to add to it, say so maybe like greater than or less than. Or, or ratios. Or something along mm -hmm. that, percentages. And then mm -hmm. the final when you come around and you're teaching algebraic equations. But it's still, but it's still adding still addition and subtraction. Mm -hmm. You're just mm -hmm. adding more concepts to uh, uh, to give a fuller understanding of what the math is about. So it's like the Torah. You yeah. have the Torah, then you have the... Yes. The, you know, you just come around again. Learn it again and learn it again in the New Testament and just realize and it's all the Torah. Yeah. And every time you see new things. And if you're with a new person mm. while, you know, if you're with a kindergartner while you learn it that first time, you're going to see things just because they're seeing new things, you know. You know, I don't know if there's any grandparents or even parents watching of younger kids who are thinking about homeschooling mm -hmm. and they see friends of theirs, because I, I was guilty of this too. Like I was the guy at work. I did not do any of the schooling. It, it was yeah. all my wife. Yeah. That's her credit. I mean, if there's any credit toward my kids' education, it was her. Mm -hmm. The ironic thing is, all she had was a grade 12 education. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yet she didn't think she could do it. And we'll talk about that mm -hmm. too, but mm -hmm. but she did it. And now our kids, one kid is you know doing great, yeah. uh, selling cars at a, at a national dealership. Mm -hmm. And our, our daughter is in physical therapy doctorate school. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I mean, parents can do this, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you don't need to have that super high education to, no. to be able to do it. Can you sit down and can you ask, ask questions and can you talk scriptures discussion. with your kids? And, mm -hmm. and, and if you can do that, then you can teach your kids mm -hmm. yeah. uh, at home. I know so because there are two things. <clears throat> first of all, Deuteronomy 6 says we're supposed to talk to our children. Well, first his commands are supposed to be on our hearts and then we're to talk to our children as we rise up, as we sit down, as we lie down. Okay, I messed up the order. Yeah. But um, we're supposed to have these conversations with them all day long mm -hmm. and as it's on our heart, then we're thinking about it, we're excited about it. The purpose of a curriculum is to remind you, don't forget to have that conversation. Hmm. That's the job of a curriculum. It's not to tell you what to teach and how to teach, but to just remind you that, you know what, you're gonna be perfectly fine, but don't forget you gotta talk about math right here, and right. You, need to, mm -hmm. you need to remember these conversations. And by the way, here are some verses that back that up that you can go to. This is where the Bible talks about that subject. And it's not that you have to be, like I was saying, it, it doesn't have to be six hours a day no. because you're not on this 180-day no. schedule. No. See, that's, again, that's the problem I had. I looked yeah. at my wife and said, how can you be done school by noon? <laughs> and she said, we've done everything. And I, I couldn't wrap my head around that. Yeah. So when I was doing my um, my teaching, you know, I got my first curricular, uh, curriculum instruction class in, in college, and they actually did a study on this, and they mm. found that the average public school student spends, I think it was 75 minutes in actual teaching during a school day. The rest of the time was in between classes, our classroom management, Sharpen our, your pencil. You know, attendance, mm -hmm. all those different things suck, mm -hmm. suck so much of the time that they were only actually in 75 minutes, a little over an hour mm -hmm. of actual instruction in a seven and a half hour day. Mm -hmm. So you think of when you're going home, I don't have to take attendance. I know my kids here. <laughs> I don't have to like tell you know, say Johnny, be quiet, or Ralph, you're over there, do be quiet, or Johnny, sit down and you well, top the head. And, and you may have to do a little we bit. You might, of that. you might, if you're just learning how to walk and tour, you might have some time there. That the most important thing is that you teach your children how but, to sit down and obey and and do pay attention, and those are skills that are in Torah. But you're not doing that in high school. No, <laughs> no, you know, right, right. I see what you're saying. Doing the developing more sure. levels. Uh, At that point, level they should thinking. know the the commandment: honor your father and mother. And Shut exactly, and, that's right. Well, exactly. that's where we all start, but that is something we work on. You know, and, and it is really nice. In a curriculum, so you can put a little reminder right there. This, this verse in Torah is talking about how your children should learn to pay attention when you speak. And so as you're, as you're learning this, you can remember to actually practice that in your home. You might have forgotten that that's a skill that you need to teach. So having a curriculum can help you to remember how to apply things, but... Um, you could just do it with a Bible. And, but but really that's could. the beauty of your curriculum as you've built it is that it, again, it takes a, the Torah or, or even just the whole Bible mm -hmm. concept mm -hmm. and that's from there, I think Dave, you said it last episode, or Dave, <laughs> Craig, I did it again. <laughs> Let's go look at my friend Dave. So I'm going to go like Dave now. So Craig, you'd mentioned that uh, it comes out of the Torah. Mm -hmm. It's not that you were using the Bible to prove a curriculum. It's no. the other way around. Yes. Exactly. And so, um, there were there are yeah. two things though. 
first we do we do do have these discussions, but we must never forget that we have the Ruach Hakodesh that lives within us, and He's He's going to be reminding us. He's going to say, "Don't forget," you know. Well, I don't I don't even know how many times we would be going through let's say Deuteronomy, and it would talk about this thing is evil in the sight of Yehovah. And then all of a sudden we'd say, oh, we might have that, you know, on a movie, it's in the living room. Maybe we should get rid of that. Haven't we had a lot of those mm. discussions in our home where we, we were just, it wasn't someone teaching us, but it was the Holy Spirit pointing out to us what was in his word and going, oh, or your kids saying, mom, why do you do that? And you're like, oh, right, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, a, it's a family atmosphere and you're having these yep. discussions and the Holy Spirit it equips us. So it sharpens everybody in the family. No like doing the together school. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? Yeah, no different than the spam or the marshmallows or anything. Yes. It's also the word of God in other areas mm -hmm. of life in the different Absolutely. sections. So many things. So, when you're teaching this together, and a lot of times our kids teach us mm -hmm. about the truths of the scripture when we're oh, together. And if constantly. we didn't have those times where we're sitting down with them and interacting in together school, mm -hmm. we would be missing out on a lot of training and learning that we need to do as parents. Mm -hmm. Because right. even our kids, I'm not kidding, saying our kids are brilliantly smart and can teach everybody anything, but they, they, the Holy Spirit does give them sometimes insights that challenge us, or they mm -hmm. start talking about something going on in their lives, and you're like, oh wow, that, this, that's well, how it sure, affects right? my life, mm -hmm. too. And speaking of being together, tell me about this bus. <coughs> what, what's this okay. bus idea? You haven't even so, yeah, we explored didn't this it. yet. So when we, uh, uh, we had started homeschooling Torah, we talked about that in the last couple episodes, and um, how God had worked in that. And we had been, a whole other subject, but like tiny houses and stuff like that. I've always kind of been intrigued in uh, that stuff and have been wa listening and watching and learning about all that. And so we decided that, um, we, and starting homeschooling Torah, we were having a lot of people contacting us and going, you know, I'm the only one that's doing this. This is, you know, I can't believe there's actually a curriculum because I thought I was the only person in the whole world that understood this stuff. Mm -hmm. And we would get this from here, here, and here, and here. And like one time we had two families that had joined homeschooling Torah and, and said that the same thing. And they were less than five miles apart from each other and had no mm -hmm. idea the other existed. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to connect those two people. Mm -hmm. But because, like, because of our background and our and the we grew up with a missionary, you know, missionary mindset and starting churches and stuff that our parents had instilled in us and God had used all that in our directing our lives, we had a burden because we're going in and we're seeing all these people coming to Torah, but, um, you know, what is it? Um, where there is no vision, there's the people perish, and when they're, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and and when there's not someone to to lead them, and, you know. Oh. I, what what I, does it sorry, say in Romans, Ephesians? Is it Romans Ephesians 10 also? chapter four was one in my mind. I'm not okay, reading ahead, mind uh, at the moment, but in Ephesians four it talks about how people, you know, he's given us apostles and 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 pastors and teachers and evangelists and all, prophets and and these are so that we are not all alone, so that um, we aren't tossed here and two by wind of doctrine, but we have a body of people to protect each other. And it's kind of like in a homeschooling environment um, when we are just learning, well, let's say a child just picked up a book and, and taught himself or herself something, but they had no teacher to fine tune them and to say, you're, you're not doing it quite right there. You need, why don't you try this? And I think we're always, um, there's a danger in being alone. And we've, we felt passionate about that. There are people in this world that are alone. Kind of going back to the whole story, we could well, see the needs. Not only that, but I th God is definitely in his scripture has pointed us into a direction that we need to be in community and that he has provided community mm -hmm. as a way, a congregation as a way to te <clears throat> teach and to train us. And that was a vital part of his uh, plan for his people. And so... Yeah, like in Ephesians 4, he says these are the leadership. Uh, we see in Acts chapter uh, 15, leadership. And then Acts chapter 6 with the deacons and that whole situation. There's leadership in First Timothy 3 and Titus 1 and on and on and on. You know That leadership and, and uh, coming together and having congregations is a vital part of what God wants us to do. And yet with, because of the, the Torah and the way it was like, it's like the Holy Spirit's been working and just grabbing people from here and there and everywhere, it, it feels so much like everybody's alone. And we had a burden that God was like, you know, maybe <clears throat> we wanted to see these people brought together and congregations and leadership trained to become the ones who would help and grow this thing and not leave it floundering on its own kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And so the whole thing with the bus was that we wanted to, 
we thought, well, God, what it, would you, do you want us to go on the road with this thing and, and be able to go and visit people and, and who were in our members and s stay with them for a, maybe a short time and, and uh, you know, try to help them develop and say, you can be a leader and, and you can train, be trained and, and start bringing others together with you and, and start growing these congregations throughout, you know, at least our country and see, and so that God can continue to develop this movement that he is doing through his word. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of, our, our desire was raising up lead the next generation. And so yeah, we bought a bus. You bought we a bought a bus. bus. So hang on to that thought. The bus, we're gonna talk more about the bus in just a second. <laughs> Until then, we are talking with Craig and Ann Elliott about their Torah Observant Homeschool curriculum. We're gonna be, we'll be uh, right back with more on this in just a couple minutes. Thank you for making it possible. Hey, thank you for your support of Shabbat Night Live. Before the break, we were talking about a bus. <laughs> Craig, yes, tell us more were. about this bus. All right, so we bought a bus and uh, we're in the process of converting it into a play, uh, RV, basically, that we could tour. A the schoolie. Country. A schoolie, a schoolie. yes, right. exactly, mm -hmm. a schoolie. <laughs> and be able to tour and visit people and help people and try and, and grow congregations through all this. And again, the, the thing that was key in our lives and how it connects with uh, homeschooling Torah and stuff is the fact that we had a burden for raising up leadership. And when we, um, we didn't want to leave training up the next generation to chance. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times with, you hear a lot of this in, in the Christian movement and, and churches and stuff like this where we've, over the last you know, half a century or so, when we go to church, we ship off our kids to youth group or to the, to the Sunday school or the children's church and all this stuff. And we, we just hope that they get what they're supposed to get and, and, and can make it their, their own kind of a thing. When we've come up in Torah, most of us have personally invested our lives and, and, and invested ourselves into studying and understanding and making Torah something that we see. And yet um, our children aren't gonna have that because they're, they're growing up in our homes. But if, we're, if they're growing up in our homes and we just think that because we did all this learning and stuff, because we um, were the ones who did this, that it's gonna go on to them too, then we're fooling ourselves just like has happened mm -hmm. so many times mm -hmm. before. We need to be uh, uh, intentional in the way that we train up our children. And because, you know, the children of Israel 
had that same problem. And they, uh, they had all the, the Joshua, and they had Moses, and they had Joshua, and Joshua tra trained a generation who went to conquer the land. And that generation had also seen all the mighty works that God had done. And they were great leaders and, and astounding people, and they developed the land and were taking it over and doing everything that God said. But that lasted one generation. Mm. And in Judges chapter two, it says there rose a generation who did not know God and who turned away from everything that God had told them they were supposed to do. Mm. We're in this movement and we've seen God work mightily and we, we should not take it for granted. I don't think God wants us to do that. We need to take responsibility for training our children to be the next leaders, the next generation of people who are uh, teaching and developing congregations and growing this to reach out into other communities and other people's lives. Mm -hmm. And especially since we always want something better for our kids, right? So we think mm -hmm. to ourselves, well, I didn't discover Torah until I was 30 or whatever yes, it was, yes. right? We don't want that for my kids. Well, then you gotta do something about it. That's right. Right, that's part of your, we're gonna talk about this later. You have this four part thing and the last part is do. Mm -hmm. What does it learn? Hear, Hear learn. learn, keep, do. Mm -hmm. Right, so you, and, but that's the major thing of it is do, we gotta yeah. do something mm -hmm. about it, right? So why not? Well. The, the nation of Israel is made up of families. Families are made up of individuals who have to make a choice, but truly it's families together making a choice to obey Yehovah. And then the families make up, you know, little congregations, congregations which mm -hmm. make up entire <coughs> tribes. And those, you know, those tribes have talents and abilities. Mm -hmm. You know, one tribe may be good at this and another tribe may be good at that. But we, you know, the father has spread his people out through the entire world and he's mm. bringing them back first to truth, but he's gonna eventually bring them all back together into community. And we have a vision for seeing children raised up, knowing how to use the Torah like a, a sharp knife, you know, that they know how to cut both ways or, or like, mm -hmm. oh, what do you say about the, the arrows? That reminded me of that. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, we're supposed to raise up arrows like a, a, uh, in, in the, the hand of a mighty, mighty warrior. warrior. But so there was an individual that, <clears throat> another a pastor that we were really got to be familiar with and enjoyed listening to a little bit early on in our lives. And uh, he used to say a thing that he says, I'm not, I'm not just raising up arrows, I'm raising up intercontinental ballistic missiles and when they come to <laughs> age, I'm gonna release them out on the world and they're gonna change this world for God. And, mm -hmm. and you know what? Yehovah has given each and every parent the responsibility to do that with their children and, and the, the knowledge that he has given us and the wisdom that he has opened our eyes to must, is our responsibility and privilege to be able to train that onto our children. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something interesting about that too that you say about that. You know, so how you were mentioning about tribes, right? So like every one of our families is the, so you guys are the tribe of Elliot, I'm the mm -hmm. tribe of Laird, yes. right? So we've got to raise up our tribe because we don't mm -hmm. want people saying, oh yeah, that tribe of Laird, they're just no good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then taking that to what we're responsible for and we're responsible for teaching our children. So Craig, you were saying like, you know, we need to raise up the next generation of leaders, but especially as guys, you know, mm -hmm. I'd mentioned earlier how I was busy working, you were busy working at one point, mm -hmm. and then you can't, so I think that's, a, I wish I could go back in time and help my wife with the homeschooling, yeah. not mm -hmm. be so busy with this and that and all mm -hmm. that. Because as men, the leaders of the tribe, we really set, like my wife tells me all the time, you set the tone for the house, you wake up grumpy, everybody else is gonna be grumpy, it's yeah. gonna be a bad day. So we need to set that example as men and be part of the teaching at home. That's something I kind of regret. I wish I would have been involved in it. I think more men should be more involved in this like you guys are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's really easy for a mom to help with that. So if, if dad is gone and, and she's home teaching the children, um, she can make it, a, you know, at dinner time or whatever, she can bring that conversation. So they're talking about it as they sit and as they walk. She can say, honey, um, you should ask the kids what they learned in science today. Mm -hmm. Because in science, they learn something because, you know, they should go to the Word of God, read what the Word of God says about how the Father created the world, and then, you know, Go explore it, see what you can learn about it, see what great inventions right. can come out of the knowledge that we, we get from the actual creator, and then tell dad all about it. The kids get excited. Right, so and, dad you know, needs to have the wherewithal to ask, ask. Them, what did you learn yes. today, yes. Or what, and really listen. Yeah. Right, and it's okay. good for the kids because now that their short-term memory had to extend all the way to supper time, you know, and if grandparents come in, you know, we used to have family come in on Erev Shabbat, and, and uh, if they're coming in once a week, have the kids tell what they learned, have them recite their verses, have them tell the, you know, show the maps that they've been you know, mm. making and, and, and then 
it gives them a, a, a check. You know, they can have that long term memory to extend it all the way to there. Or, you know, yeah. have them give a. Okay, know, that makes me feel better now. I don't feel so bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, that's so, so normal. So, when we think of together school, and it, like a lot of times it typically goes on to the mom. Absolutely. It will. But, like, we are we both work, okay? We're just, just in case anybody. They work it. writing. Yes. Yeah, we both <laughs> yeah, work, obviously. Yes, we yeah. both work from home. Yeah. But neither of us has the ability just to spend all that, do that same with our children. So, oftentimes we will split up mm -hmm. the schooling too. Mm -hmm. So uh, she does some things, I do some things, and depending on schedules and days, it, sometimes that even is tweaked a little bit. I was just thinking uh, while, and while we were waiting to come to do this episode, uh, my daughter uh, texted me and asked me a question. She's like, Dad, um, what, what, what was it that Polk was known for in that, the Civil War podcast that you were listening to? Because we're going through and, and on our way to, to do groceries and stuff and do errands, I'll, I'll throw in a podcast about the Civil War. And they're going through and studying in mm -hmm. American history, history. Mm -hmm. and here. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're learning this. And then when they get to this thing, it connects it. Now they're, now they're asking me, oh, yeah, well, Dad, what is that? And it, and it brings all these things to life a lot more. And even though... She may be the one that actually taught the lesson. Mm -hmm. um, I'm te helping to teach by just these other side notes, or uh, and, and you could do this with anything. If you're, it's all about discussion. It's all about talking yeah. a, to mm -hmm. your children. A novel idea. You know, there are our children. We love them. Let's have a conversation as much as possible. Those 18 years or whatever go so fast. We have some friends of ours that he works night shift yes. and, and so he's overnight all the time. And so they do some of their schooling in the morning, but that's usually when he's sleeping, obviously. And then he gets up in the afternoon and goes to work around say 10 a, at night. So they do a, a part of their schooling after dinner, between mm -hmm. dinner and him going to work. Mm -hmm. And that allows him to be able to be a part of this kid's schooling too. So this is the great thing about homeschooling is you're not beholden to someone else's schedule. You can work this into your life wherever you need to. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it may take a touch of work to do it, but you know your schedule. We know our schedule. Our schedule is different than your schedule, but you can, you can manipulate this to do whatever you need to do to be successful at being a homeschooling parent mm -hmm. and to train your children in the word of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, this is a really good curriculum. You know, some folks might say, oh, it's some a Torah observant homeschool curriculum. You know, it, it, that sounds like a really small kind of pet project kind of thing, but you guys have really developed, I mean, literally there is a stack of books you brought that this is just mm -hmm. a what, a third of it? <laughs> yeah. It's literally this tall. So congratulations to you guys, first of all, for yeah. doing all this. And it's top-notch stuff. I mean, we're gonna show some stuff on the screen here. I mean, look at this. Here, this here, is, this is some this. great so, illustrations. This is our uh, foundations great. of preschool curriculum. And we, this is this is the whole thing here, but we also have it online that you can get all these things on, online also. If you want a PDF. If you want to do that. The but, interesting wow. thing about, we need to start at preschool yeah. teaching them how to have respect for their parents, how to listen, because we're supposed to Shema Israel, and that's that means to pay attention and listen. And we're supposed, you know, teach them how to, how to hold a pencil, yeah, how to right. tie their shoes, what are their colors, you know, the, and, and, and we can teach them their Hebrew letters and not just their mm -hmm. English letters, so that we want them to be able to read the Bible in its original language. So that's, that's in just in preschool. Yep. Like yeah, that's so every like there's a lot of this stuff you can go yeah. through and see. Wow, you, that is really well done, you guys. Yeah, and you're, you're going through and you're teaching a lot of these things, and these are all skills that are needed to be able to go on and obviously to further, but this, wow. so this is uh, like a whole year so, of just preschool in now, this one. Before we get too far into the other stuff we're gonna talk about, I wanna make sure that we know that you guys have made special arrangements for everybody watching here to get this. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and already it's, a, I mean, you put it together at a really great price. Now, if it's Shabbat, of course, we wanna encourage people, wait till after Shabbat. Absolutely. This mm -hmm. is a yes. Torah observant homeschool mm -hmm. curriculum after all. Yes. So wait till after Shabbat and then go take a look. Mm -hmm. There's the website at the bottom of the screen and you guys have created a code, which we've also put at the bottom of the screen there. So there it is right mm -hmm. there. So make sure you go and get that. And you can get, now, when someone gets a curriculum, do they buy, do they get like for, for one particular age group? Can they get it for a whole bunch of age groups? Or how does it work? 
So we have two different options. You can get printed books because most moms prefer printed books. But when we started, remember I told you, do you remember how many weeks of curriculum we had written? <laughs> two, two weeks. weeks <laughs> two weeks. But the, the cool thing about technology and the time period in which the father has allowed us to be alive is that we can constantly keep adding to the curriculum on our website. Homeschooling Torah is a membership. So when you have a membership to Homeschooling Torah, you get everything that we have. And then we can keep adding to and you still get that. So the, you know, that first year, we just had that one year of curriculum, but we can keep adding more subjects and adding more things, but the members to Homeschooling Torah can yes, get all yeah. of it. So like this was our so. first history. And mm -hmm. so this is serious. Now there's four, there's four years on this. Yeah. From ancient times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. this would be your okay. four year cycle. You go one, two, three, four, mm -hmm. and you do this yeah, And we have times. more planned. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. as this, the father gives then, us help. Then when you go to high school, right. you can take one year and do the American history. So you well, you don't have to wait till high school to do it. Or you American. can do it any right. time. You can do it any and, time. And just take that as one year mm -hmm. and take off of this for a year. We can come back to this the next mm -hmm. year to do the next thing. But each of these, so when you go through, you, you're going to forget stuff in four years. And mm -hmm. when you're a little kid, you're going to only remember certain things. And you come back around and do it again, like we were talking with the cycles, now you're mm -hmm. picking more stuff up. And, mm -hmm. and the third time around, you're at a high school level now, and now you're going to pick up a lot more. And there's different... Um, Less or different uh, activities you for might each do age an group essay that are in here at and high stuff school like level. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So, mm -hmm. you know, in kindergarten, you might be drawing a picture. In mm -hmm. middle school years, you're maybe putting together a a little notebook on it, or, or mm -hmm. you know, coloring maps and stuff like that, or making a paragraph about mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, an Indian or something in the mm -hmm. in a American history. But then, as a high school student, you might be going, you know, why, writing a paper about. What is a re what is republicanism or something like that? And, uh, and the interesting <laughs> thing is, I, I'm looking at that cover and I'm saying, where does God talk about the United States? If we're supposed to be using the Bible as our primary textbook, yeah. w which chapter is that in? You know, there's not really anything that says that. But the you know, it's you you this one? as Michael would talk about the the. The, everything in history is in that Bible. People don't know what they're reading and they don't know that when they're, they're reading a section of scripture that might be talking about this country or that country. How many times as a, back as a, in my Christian days did I read through the minor prophets and not have a clue who that was referring to and what history was fulfilled and, and even the things to come. He tells us these things and so we can use that to teach our children and, and on top of that what is important to the father in history? What, what did he say would happen? You know, his people, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the covenant he made with them, and then he scattered them to the ends of the earth because they were bad, and then he used that to take the gospel. And he's still doing that. So we, we can use that to teach so many things, geography and, and, and the, all well, the histories of all the people. For instance, history, I <laughs> talked about last episode, um, we don't want to use the world to teach us about the Bible. We want to use the Bible to teach us about the world. And mm -hmm. when we go in, when in, from a history standpoint, when you start out, and like I said, in history, in eighth, uh, when I was teaching seventh and eighth grade American history, you know where we started out with? Telling about cavemen over in Europe and, and how they were descendants from apes and, and evolution and stuff like this. And you're like, mm -hmm. I spent a quarter telling kids about ape men and things like this. And I'm like, what does that have to do with me teaching about American history? Mm -hmm. Zero, mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. And so we, we, when we created this, we start with Genesis chapter one, mm -hmm. and this one goes from Genesis one through the Babylonian creation to captivity. Assyria, mm -hmm. and through the Assyrian cap of taking off in northern Israel and the captivity. And we follow the timeline of the Bible in teaching this. And then the second one starts with Babylon and goes mm -hmm. from Babylon and, and through- All the way to um, Roman times. Yeah. That way they know what in our culture came from ancient Babylon, what came from mm, Assyria, what good. came from Greece and Rome. And how does it relate? And we've taken, we grabbed the Bible verses and the, the narrative of the Bible and attach it to the mm. history too, mm -hmm. so that they're connecting again, Bible and truth to history. So now relating that to, okay, so the Bible, the truth, and history, and even the, the, so future history, if mm -hmm. you will, yes. revelation. Absolutely. So do you teach things from American history, for example, so the monetary system, mm -hmm. where does Absolutely. that come from? And you know, maybe yep. kids Economics can kind of clue in and going, wait a minute, yeah. this is happening again. Absolutely. Kind of Absolutely. And you know what the most important thing to me is? I used to He's a history major, I wasn't. I didn't like history because what does it have to do with me? You know, this king died and I have to learn all these kings and I don't understand <laughs> right. what that applies to my life. And the fact of the matter is, 
I want you to find out who you are and in that he called us from before the world began and he knew our names and that we fit into a spot in history, then you know, and, and that maybe there's even some prophecy about where we are. You're like, oh, we're important. You know, he cares. He cares about us. And and I, I think most of all, and then also to see that his word always comes true. Mm. I mean, so much faith our children can have because if he was always true up to this point, never, ever making a mistake, then he's not going to make a mistake in the future as well. You know, and it gives them that confidence that they can pray, they can ask him and he will answer and he will, you know, he'll do miracles for them just like he did for Joshua. Mm. And, and I think that we should have, that our kids should trust him. They should know that he is absolutely and 100% reliable in every way. And I think that, I don't know, that's that to me is the best part of studying history. And that suddenly it's interesting. Uh, <laughs> so. We only have a couple minutes left, so I wanted to ask you a question. And we're going to have another episode, because I think we're not, we're not done talking about this, so I'm going to have another episode with you guys. But if people are looking at this going, yeah, I want to homeschool my kids, but I know you've said that I can do this, mm. but... I don't know if I can do this. And uh, do you guys have some kind of support system or mm -hmm. how does that work if someone wants to do this but they're not quite sure of themselves? Well, absolutely. We do have support. We have, um, what, uh, 100 hours of training videos that are free to anyone that they can watch on our YouTube channel. But as well, um, we have you know a team of people that they can call up and talk on the phone. And if you need help planning out, you know, what what is the best place to put my child if we're just beginning to homeschool. You know, we're happy to help people with that. Um, but we right, also have- Right, because this is flexible, right? You can absolutely. have, like you're saying, you can do this year, this year, yeah. or this so one, like, and like, mm -hmm. you know. You could be coming in at the fourth grade, you mm -hmm. know, you your yeah. youngest kids fourth and up to eighth grade, or if you're starting and you have a kid preschooler and up to sixth grade, and, yeah. and they're pulling your kid out of public school in sixth grade in the middle of the year. And What's like, the what, prerequisite? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we so definitely have all these things we, help. we help people to plug mm -hmm. in and go, okay, this is probably where you should be with where your family's at and things or learn yes. what your state laws are and make yeah. sure that you are, you know, at least hitting those state laws so that you're not going to get in trouble, but you can still use the Bible even yeah. while you hit those state yeah. laws. And, you know, we're, our family is living proof, too. I wish we would have had this. We didn't, but we still, you know, all you have to do is know your state laws. Mm -hmm. We did homeschool. Mm -hmm. My daughter got a full ride at a college. Mm -hmm. She's now a doctor. It's mm -hmm. possible. Absolutely. You can do this. Absolutely. You know? And if you need help, well, you know, like we had folks helping us out mm -hmm. with uh, complicated subjects we couldn't. Uh, you know, we Indeed. didn't have enough knowledge, yeah. about, but I'm yeah. sure you guys Indeed. have that support. Too. Yes, and you can make videos to show your customers how to diagram a sentence or how to solve this right. algebra problem, and that is an easy fix right. in our society today. Well, let's continue more next week. Okay. We're out of time, but let's continue more next week. This is a great conversation. I think a lot of people are intrigued, saying, yes, let, let me get this right now because this is exactly what I need. So thank you for being here. Yep. Let's give more details next week. You join us next week, too. Until then, we bid you Shabbat Shalom from Shabbat Night Live. Shalom, Torah fans. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with a friend. Tap the subscription button and the bell icon, and I promise to update weekly with in-depth biblical research. Be sure to download the new michaelrood.tv app for both mobile and home devices for even more commercial-free content.